What's up, kings and queens? It's your boy Dan from Daft Previews, aka the COVID King, Flu Game Dan, and I'm back to give you a preview on some of the NBA player props that I like for tomorrow. I am still unwell, and you can probably hear that by the sound of my voice, so I'm not doing a full preview of every single player, but I will still take you through all the players that I am leaning on, tell you what I like, tell you why I'm thinking of picking it, and then in the pinned comment, you'll see my final bets. Now, this worked for me the day prior. We had a massive day. I think 7.3 units profit. Absolutely nailed it. I called that Devin Booker game as well. We took his uh, alternate line, some high-value singles. So another great day in the book, 7.3 units. We started April off absolutely on fire. I thought, given it's a new month, I'll show you how the previous months have been going. I and mean, they've been going great already. We're 7.36 units up in, oh, sorry, 10.4 units up in April. We did 10 units up in March, 25 in Feb. So January was the only losing month we've had. Minus 18 units. We're close to 80 units profit on the season. So things are looking very well on all these picks that I post on YouTube. Now let's get into it, shall we? Let's go. All right, we're jumping into Outlier. Now a lot of you guys have signed up to Outlier's free trial. So if you guys haven't, I encourage you, sign up to Outlier's free trial. Um, I teach you how I do my stuff. Um, and you can start finding your own banging plays as well um, as we do. I like to filter it by odds. We go minus 130 first, and then I take it game by game, taking the things that I like. So I've got a few leans in this very first game. It's Milwaukee Bucks versus the Washington Wizards. Bucks still are missing Dame Lillard, but still, they're 14-point favorites in this one. Pat Beverly, Chris Middleton, Giannis Antetokounmpo, all game-time decisions. And for the Wizards, Kyle Kuzma is a big out for this game, which means Jordan Poole, Denny Advia going to be carrying more of the burden in this one. So uh, my very first pick, well, not my pick, but my very first lean here is absolutely, it's actually on Pat Beverly, right? Now, if you look at his trend lines, under is definitely what you want to see, but with no Dame, I'm actually looking at his over here, all right? So playing with the filters here, Pat Beverly, without Dame, we can see a lot of these games, you can see we're with Philly, right? So his last game, though, against the Atlanta Hawks, he scored 18 points. First game in a box uniform without Dame Lillard. In that game, what's most important, he played 36 minutes, shot the ball 10 times, which is what we want to see. A little bit of activity. He's got a good matchup here against the Washington Wizards. So what I've done is I've filtered out just Pat Beverly playing at least because he played 36 minutes in that last game against Atlanta, right? Um, to give us a bigger sample size, I filtered out his games where he's played more than 30 minutes. And if you filter Patrick Beverly's games with more than 30 minutes, you can see he's covered this line of 10.5 points in seven consecutive games. One of those games with the Bucks, where he scored 18 points against the Atlanta Hawks, the Washington Wizards, they're a worse defending team than the Atlanta Hawks. And I don't think Giannis is going to go out there and score 50 points in this one. There'll be opportunities for Beverly, Beasley, Middleton, even Brook Lopez potentially to get theirs. But this is one pick that I like. It's a plus money play as well, plus 100. So that's the very first one I'm leaning on for Pat Beverly. The next person in this game that I'm looking at is looking at Denny Advia here. And I'm looking at, I, I've been taking his points and rebounds. I've taken that a few times now, um, which has been cashing, but it has been a little bit sweaty for me. But what I am looking at is his rebounds plus assists, right? And you can see it here. In his last five games, Denny Advia has cashed his rebounds plus assists line in every single game. Been excellent, averaging 16.4 rebounds and assists in his last five games. If we have a look at the matchup, the rebound matchup is not too bad, but his assist matchup is a very good one. So I'm also considering just taking his assist prop as well because um, he does have a good matchup here for assists. With no Kyle Kuzma, it really leaves Jordan Poole and him as the only uh, creators on the offensive side of the ball. Jordan Poole, obviously his assist line moved up as well. I'm really liking this. His recent form is great. Seven out of his last 10, six consecutive games now. He's covered this line. It's a very small sample size because Kuzma has played a lot of games this year. If we look at his last few games without Kyle Kuzma, you can see his last two games, he's killed it in rebounds and assists. Prior to that, didn't have the <clears throat> didn't have the best of games back here in February, but this is this season. So Kuzma's only missed three games that Denny Advi has played. And that first game back in Feb, Washington blown out by Phoenix, and he only played 25 minutes. The last two games without Kuz, played 39 and 38 minutes, covering this rebounds plus assist line. So uh, I don't mind that. 
And if you want to have a quick look at his assist line, the line's at four and a half, and he's covered in four out of his last five games. So we do the same thing, and we filter that out without Kuzma. Small sample size from this year, but he's only covered in one of those three games. So he's very capable of having a big assist game, capable of a big rebounding game as well. Um, the Wizards, they're going to have Marvin Bagley, but outside of that, probably not much competition to get boards. So his rebounds and assist prop, definitely a lean of mine. Uh, speaking of rebounds plus assists, I actually don't mind that same play for Chris Middleton. So let's have a look at Chris Middleton's rebounds plus assists. Oh, it's right at the top. Look at my dumbass scrolling down. Now, very similar to Denny Advia, Chris Middleton has covered his rebounds plus assists line in five consecutive games now. He's got a good matchup for rebounds and assists. The Wizards bottom 10 in both rebounds and assists allowed to small forwards. So definitely loving the recent form here of Chris Middleton. Looking at his minutes, minutes are pretty decent. As of late, they've started to increase. So you've got to factor in that there's no Dame Lillard in this game as well. So Dame hasn't missed too many games this season. Um, Middleton's played in five games without Dame. You can see Middleton's only covered in one of his last five. The last game without Dame, he covered six and six. Prior to that, you can see that his minutes were all over the place. This is when he was had a minutes restriction, coming back from his injury earlier in the season. But what we can say is that more recently, he's really started to find his feet. He's feeling a lot more comfortable with his body. So, yeah, I don't mind this play for Chris Middleton at all. So, rebounds plus assists, good matchup. Um, good opportunity here without Dame. His usage rate will go up over his last five games, 33.4 minutes. So, Unless the Bucks absolutely annihilate the Wizards and blow them out by 20, 20 or so points, I think that's the only risk that I need to factor in. So something that I'll be looking into. So the three leans that I have on that game, let's head over to the next one. It's the Raptors versus the Lakers. So the Lakers, 12.5 point favorites in this. LeBron, AD, game time decisions, as well as Jackson Hayes. RJ Barrett looks like he's going to make his return. Quickly is a game time decision as well. So tough to find a lot of picks within this game that I really like, but um, just scanning my board of leans here to see what I, what I landed on. Actually, no, I took it off, so I've got no leans in this game. The one lean that I did have was Kelly Olenek assists because he's been cashing him really well. Check this out. I'll show it to you anyway, but I'm not going to look any further into it. Um, his last four games, his assists have been through the roof. 10, 9, 8, and 11. He's got a line of only 5.5. He's got a great matchup here against the Lakers, who allow the second most assist to centers on the season. I think my concern with it was RJ Barrett most likely to play in this one. And looking at Kalinic, Kelly O'Linick's last five games with RJ Barrett in the lineup, you can see that he's only covered this line once, one out of five games. In those games, he was playing close to 30 minutes. So the minute RJ Barrett comes in, we should see a drop off in Kelly O'Linick's assist. We probably won't, but. I'm not man enough to take the bet knowing what I know. So, yeah, I've got no real good leans in this game. There's too many game time decisions in here. Um, but you might be able to find some value in it. But the line's a big one. Not too much consistency. Let's jump into the next game. It's a Miami Heat versus New York Knicks. Now, in this game, we've got Terry Rozier, Duncan Robinson, Nikola Jovic, Caleb Martin, um, all game time decisions, as well as Mitch Robinson for the New York Knicks. Uh, but a lot of these guys aren't necessarily moving lines. Jimmy Butler, Bam, Jalen Brunson, all expected to play, right? So for me, what I'm looking at here, I'm looking at this. I'm looking at Bam's PRA. So over 32.5 PRA for PRA for Bam at a bio. So check that out. You can see it on the screen. He's covered this line in nine out of his last 10 games, averaging 35.3 points, rebounds, and assists. The difficult thing for him here is the matchup somewhat difficult. The Knicks allow the third fuels points, ninth fuels rebounds, and the second fuels assists to centers on the season. In head-to-head -head matchups, Bam's only covered this in four out of his last 12 games against the New York Knicks. So he has had some troubles with them in the past, but his recent form right now is excellent. I'm going to really hold off from even diving any further into this until I know who is or isn't playing, but it looks like Rosie, Robinson, Jovic, Kayla Mann, they're all expected to play. It's only Tyler Hero they're going to be missing in this one. So yeah, I'm a bit hesitant, but I wanted to show you that anyway, so you know where my head's at. Next play I want to take you through is Jalen Brunson. And what we're looking at here is his first quarter assist. He's actually been cashing this really well. Check this out. 
So eight out of his last 10 games, Jalen Brunson's covered one and a half assists in the first quarter. He's got a good matchup here against Miami Heat. God damn. He's got a good matchup. He's covered it in seven consecutive games. In head-to-head games against Miami, he has struggled, though. Four out of his last 11 games, he's cashed this in. He's gone under in four straight. He's played the Miami Heat twice this season, and he's gone under his first quarter assist prop in both of those games. <clears throat> but I am loving the recent form. So what I'm going to do is look into his potential assists in the first quarter, see if there's been a change over the last five games compared to the other games in the season. If we are seeing a big uplift, then it's something I'll take. If he's if there's no movement in his potential assist, he did he must have players around him making shots, which means he's getting lucky then I probably wouldn't take it. But if we are seeing more potential assists compared to his season average over his last five, then Jalen Brunson, first quarter assists, definitely something I'm going to play. Jumping into the next game, it's the Oklahoma City Thunder versus Philadelphia 76ers. You know, SGA is a game-time decision, as well as Jalen Williams, Tyrese Maxey as well. So a lot of those guys do move lines. And given that, there's barely any markets available in this game. The one lean that I do have is something that I've probably spoken about in the past. And what I'm looking at here is SGA's under in the first quarter. I don't mind his under in the overall game, but you kind of sweat the whole game on taking those unders. Whereas if we look at the under in his first quarter prop of eight and a half points, what do we see? He's gone under in six consecutive games now for SGA. He's gone under his first quarter prop. Eight and a half is quite low. Normally it sits at nine and a half or ten and a half. At 10.5, I always take it. At 9.5, I'm a little bit hesitant. At 8.5, you'd think I'd run away completely. But given his form as of late, the injury that he's going through, the questionable tag on whether he's going to play, the fact that Philly, they only allow the, they allow the fourth fewest points to point guards on the season, I think it's worth considering here. 8.5 points, it's a lot of points for a regular person. SGA is not like that, but his form's down. He's injured. We all know that. Um, but other people on his team can pick up the slack too. So this could be a big game for Chet, probably another big game for Josh Giddy. Um, what we've seen in the past though, last two games against Philly, he scored 13 and nine points in the first quarter, albeit Joel Embiid was playing in those games, probably a little bit more hype around it. The line in this game is only five and a half, but I don't think SGA is going to need to score 30 to 40 points in order for OKC to win. His points line has dropped. Let me have a look at that. It's 28 and a half quite low and again taking advantage of the fact that his form is down as of late so he's gone under his point sign in four consecutive games 28 and a half i'm not willing to play with that because if that this game is close towards the end of the game sga is going to be taking a lot of shots but that first quarter prop that you know in the first quarter it's not win or die it's there's a lot of time there's a lot of opportunity sga can coast a little bit to open this game up and save himself for the later part of the game. Well, that's where my mind's at anyway. But yeah, that one lean that I have in this game, outside of that, I didn't find anything of value. Jumping to the next game, it's the Minnesota Timberwolves versus the Houston Rockets. Um, in this game, there's no lineup changes. Alperin Shangun's out, Carl Anthony Towns is out. They've been out for quite some time. So a lot of the markets are currently available. Uh, first player that I'd be looking at here is Anthony Edwards, and I don't mind his rebound prop. So... Let's head over there. It's quite high, but he's been killing it as of late. So as you know, I've been betting this prop, his rebounds plus assist prop for quite some time. He's been hitting it for he's been hitting it very well lately. The problem is he's gone under in six consecutive games against the Rockets. Um, his rebound prop, it's not too different, but I do like what I'm seeing. So his rebound prop, he's covered in seven out of his last ten games. The line's at six and a half, and it's also at plus money. Uh, has it rebounded well against Houston in the past? Did have six rebounds the last time they played, but you know, no, no, Carl Anthony Towns. Anthony Edwards has really started to pick it up. I'm just going to have a look at um, the games he's played the Rockets without Cat in the lineup. So he's played the Rockets three times without Carl Anthony Towns. He's gone under this line three consecutive times. But Anthony Edwards averaging a career high in rebounds this season. Um, all of these games, uh, all last season. So. I'm not taking that into account as much. He has been rebounding like a beast as of late. I have been liking it. I watched that last game against Chicago because 
We did have a bet on Rudy Gobert to get some rebounds, and Anthony Edwards just snaking everything. That game was close. They were desperate. Anthony Edwards was hustling like a motherfucker to get those boards. In this game, the Wolves, eight-point favorites in it, so I don't see a blowout. We can see here his rebound chances are somewhat consistent, get, getting over 10 rebound chances per game. And based on his actual rebound numbers, he's got a very high percentage of rebounds when he gets them. There's a lot of players that probably rebound at 50 to 60%. Anthony Edwards is close to 75%, 70, yeah, about 75 to 80% of the rebound chances he gets. He's actually going to get the rebound. So um, I don't mind the rebound prop there for Anthony Edwards, especially at these odds at plus money. The other player we have to look at is Jabari Smith Jr. So you probably weren't expecting me to say that because I wasn't expecting it either until I found a good way to take his unders. Check this out. I'm leaning on a Jabari Smith under nine and a half rebounds and assists. And what we can see here, he's gone under in seven out of his last 10 games. He's gone under in his last five games. In head-to-head -head matchups against Minnesota, he's gone under in two of his last three. No Shangun. Jabari Smith gets to play center. A somewhat difficult matchup here is up against Rudy Gobert. They're running Rudy and Nas Reed. So Minnesota run a very big lineup. Jabari Smith Jr. I think he's going to have a difficult time getting some rebounds in this game. Um, the assist line takes his number up by two, I believe, because, yeah, his line is one and a half for his assists, which, you know, sometimes he hits, sometimes he doesn't, but he's actually hit two out of his three games against Minnesota, but that's fine. We could wear that. If you look at his rebounds and assists, actually, where's his, re his rebound props at seven and a half, so you're really just taking the extra two assists that you assume he's going to get, and you still get plus money odds, so... Nine and a half here, so he needs 10 rebounds plus assists in order to break this line wide open. I'm not overly concerned about this one here, this particular game in January. I just feel like given his recent form and the tough matchup uh, and the fact that I don't like Jabari Smith Jr. that much because he's cooked a lot of my bets in the past, I don't mind this one. So we'll see where I land and whether that makes the pin comment or not, but you shall see. But they're the only two leans that I have on that particular game. We then have the Cleveland Cavaliers versus Utah Jazz. And look, Jordan Clarkson's still out. John Collins, Laurie Market, and they're all out as well. For the Cavs, almost full strength. Garland, Mitchell, Mobley, Allen, Struess. They're starting fives, all healthy, raring to go. So the first play that I'm looking at here, it's a play that I took not too long ago. I took it in their last game, actually. Keontae George, under in his PRA. So when I took his last PRA, but I believe it was 29 and a half against the Sacramento Kings. Finished on only 22, so swept free. That line's now dropped to 27 and a half, but still, with that line, he's gone under in nine consecutive games now. He's up against the Cleveland Cavaliers, like I said, starting lineup, full strength. Now, Keontae George has a tough matchup for points, rebounds, and assists. The Cavs are the eighth fewest points, the second fewest rebounds, and the sixth fewest assists to point guards on the season. The Cavs need to start making a push to get to the playoffs, Utah, clearly tanking. Um, but Keontae George, under in nine straight. The matchup checks out. Um, it, it just makes too much sense to me, to be honest. So uh, I think they're going to have to get some unknown guys to produce for the Utah Jazz. Colin Sexton, perhaps, up against his old team. But, yeah, I'm not minding this. Under 27 and a half. I'll do some line chopping. I'll do some, hopefully, the Cavs blow these guys out. They're 11 and a half point favorites, I believe. So, yeah, I don't mind that. The next two plays I have, I'm a little bit torn thinking about them, to be honest. You can make it the next three plays because I like the assist play for Karis LeVert, for Darius Garland, and for Donovan Mitchell. The problem is, is there enough assists to go around? So I'll go through each player and you'll see why. So Karis LeVert's line, four and a half. Playing off the bench now that they're full strength. The Utah Jazz, they allow the most assists to any team this season. So Karis Levert, he's covered this in nine out of his last 10. We've got Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland back. So if we filter with Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell, you can see Karis Levert has covered this line in 10 consecutive games. <laughs> so with them at full strength, Karis Levert still gets busy. But so I don't mind that. That looks great. If that was the only thing you looked at, you know, fuck, this is a great damn play. But if we look at Donovan Mitchell, he's just come back from injury. You can see his line's also at four and a half. He's this in eight out of his last 10 games. Up against his old team, he had six assists against them last time. 
if we filter all his games with Darius Garland, for example, he's cashed eight out of his last 10 games. So that looks pretty good too. And then we have Darius Garland. Where is Darius Garland gone? Darius. Here he is. So Darius Garland, his assist line's at six and a half. He's covered this in seven out of his last 10 games. The Utah Jazz allow the most assists to point guards on the season. So they allow the most assists to the team and most the most assists to point guards. Darius Garland just happens to be the point guard for the Cleveland Cavaliers. Now he's covered this in seven out of his last 10. If we filter out his last 10 games with Donovan Mitchell, we can see that. He's covered this line in eight out of his last 10 games with Donovan Mitchell. So I don't know. What are the chances that they all go over? I'm not too sure, but I'll do research into all three. I'll definitely be picking one. There's a chance I pick two, but yeah, one of them is definitely going over. Let me know in the comment section which one do you like best. Also, staying in the same game, I like the. I don't mind a play here on Jared Allen, and it's his first quarter points. So check this out. His line's at five and a half. He's covered this in. Eight out of his last 10 games. Got a good matchup here against the Utah Jazz, who are the eighth most points at centers on the season. In head-to-head matchups, Jared Allen scored eight points against them the last time they played in December, uh, covering in two out of his last three. So, look, if a lot, if Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Karis LeVert are going to get a lot of assists, they need somebody to pass it to, right? And if it's a pick and roll, Jared Allen's your man. So, yeah, I don't mind that play for Jared Allen. I'll look into that one a little bit further. We then jump into the next game. It's the Denver Nuggets versus San Antonio Spurs. Spurs, complete tank mode. They've got Sohan and um, Denver Vassell. They've been shut down for the rest of the season. They're still playing Wemby out there. And just a whole by the, a bunch of other chumps. For the Denver Nuggets, uh, Jamal Murray, Aaron Gordon, Nikola Jokic, they're all game time decisions in this one. So the line, minus 16 points. The Denver Nuggets is only... Really, there's only one player that I'm looking at, to be honest, and that's Michael Porter Jr. And I'm only looking at his first quarter props. So I like his points prop and his rebound prop, and you can see it here on the screen. Firstly, he's covered this line in nine out of his last 10 games, four and a half points. They always look to feed him early to get going, and nine out of his last 10. He's cashed in. If you look at his last 20 games, Michael Porter Jr. has cashed this line 18 of his last 20 games. I think I said this on the last video. If you just bet Michael Porter Jr. first quarter points every single time, you'd be a very wealthy man or woman or transvestite, whatever you choose to be. But yeah, loving the points prop here. The matchup, somewhat difficult on paper, but MPJ don't give a fuck. He's covered this in four of his last five games against the San Antonio Spurs. So... I'm definitely playing that because I'll just play it every single time and see how much money I make by the end of the season. The other player that I like is his first quarter rebounds prop. Now, I'm not as confident in it, but I think the numbers still stack up quite well. So he's covered this line in eight of his last 10 games, which is brilliant. Looking at his last 20, 14 of his last 20 games, he's covered one and a half rebounds. So it's not as strong as his first quarter prop, but I do think they're both worth taking. In head-to-head matchups, he's covered this in four of his last five against the San Antonio Spurs. All right. San Antonio Spurs missing more of their better players. So you can imagine it's going to be more difficult for. It might mean Wemby takes a lot more shots than he normally would, which is going to remove Nikola Jokic for, out of the rebounding position, which means people like Aaron Gordon, Michael Porter Jr., more rebound chances available for them, in my opinion, which I just my mind. But I like both of those props for Michael Porter Jr. I might parlay them together. Who knows? Let's see where we end up. But they're the only bets that I like in that game. We then have the Dallas Mavericks versus the Golden State Warriors. This is going to be a great game. Clay Thompson, Jonathan Kaminga, Derek Lively, all game time decisions in this one. I think Clay Thompson likely to play, though. Not too sure about the others. So in this game, quite a few players that I don't mind. And the first one is Andrew Wiggins rebounds. So his line's at four and a half. Now he's covered this rebound line in nine out of his last 10 games, which is excellent. I do like that. In terms of the matchup, it's a pretty decent matchup. The Dallas Mavericks allow the ninth most rebounds to small forwards on the season. If we look at head-to-head matchups, he's covered in both games. First, the Dallas Mavericks twice this year got five rebounds in both of those games. The games last season, he went well under. Still played his normal minutes, but I don't know what the hell is going on there. But we do know his last two games against Dallas this season, he's covered this rebound line both times. Now, this is a home game for the Warriors as well. So they're one-point favorites, so chances are it's not going to be a blowout. 
If this was in Dallas, given the way that Dallas is playing, it might be a different story. But home game for the Warriors, I don't mind this for Wiggins. If Kaminga's not there to play, could get more opportunities for Wiggins to, to get some rebounds in this game. Um, what I do like, his minutes, they're a little bit inconsistent, not going to lie. But um, look, even in 20-odd minutes, he's shown that he can get these rebounds, right? So um, I'm not completely against it. I don't mind this for Andrew Wiggins. The next play, we're going to look at Luca Now, I've got to say, how good has Luca been? Absolutely mind-blowing. This guy's too good at basketball sometimes. But the play that I'm considering is his first quarter assists. Now, I'm not going to touch his overall assists because sometimes he just gets into this scoring mode and he just goes berserk. Um, but in the first quarter, he's very comfortable handing it off. Um, even that game against Houston, he scored 22 points in the first quarter, still had four assists. Bloke's a fucking monster. But anyway, the line's at two and a half in this game. He's covered this in his last 10 games, an 80% hit rate. In his last 20 games, he's hit this 15 times. So if you bet this every single game, you'll be a very happy man. So if you th- if you think about him, the probability of him hitting this, it's definitely more than a 50-50 shot here. In his last four games against the Warriors, he's covered this in three of his last four. He got three assists in both games against the Warriors this season. And the Dallas Mavericks now, the supporting cast around Luka is better now than it was uh, earlier in the season. So, yeah, I don't mind this one for Luka Doncic. I think that'd be great. Hopefully the Mavs, they make their shots. I'm talking about you, PJ Washington, because I swear Luca could have 10 to 15 assists a game if PJ Washington could shoot, but that's a story for another day. Um, the other player that I like for first quarter assists as well is Steph Curry. Now, Steph Curry, he's lines at one and a half, and it's plus 100 for this. Now, the hit rate's not as great as Luca's. The matchup's not as great for him either, but he has hit this in eight of his last 10 games, which is wonderful. In head-to-head matchups, he's covered in his last three games against the Dallas Mavericks. Three out of his last four, he's got, he's got two assists. Um, in terms of his minutes, he's playing 8.7 minutes a night, uh, which I don't love. I wish it was higher. Um, played the same amount when he versus the Dallas Mavericks in those three games. Um, but what I'm concerned with is... No, I'm not overly concerned with who's going to shoot the ball. they they got people who can score. So, yeah, I just don't mind this play. I don't think it's a bad... I do like the Luka one a little bit better, but this is only two assists here, and Steph Curry's done a good job of this as of late. So I'm going to research a bit further, look at his potential assists, see it's been whether it's on the up, the opportunities are increasing. If not, then I'll probably just avoid it altogether. The other play that I'm looking at is Ramadan Kyrie, and I'm looking at his points plus assists. So... Kyrie covered his points plus assist line in eight out of his last 10 games, which is excellent. Uh, the matchup against the Warriors is not an easy one, but Kyrie is one of those players where I don't think you put too much stock into the matchup anyway. If you look at how the Warriors are going to be starting this game as well, Steph Curry, Clay Thompson might be back in the starting lineup. My question is, who's going to be guarding Kyrie? So you might have Andrew Wiggins and Luca, perhaps. But then you're going to be you're going to have an aging Steph Curry or a crippled Steph uh, Clay Thompson defending Kyrie. Kyrie's going to have an opportunity here to cook. Um, so he's hit this in eight of his last ten. Last matchup with the Warriors, 23 points and 10 assists in that game. He shot eight from 16 from the field in 35 minutes. Right, one from five from deep in his last ten games. He's playing 35 minutes. He's attempting almost 19 shots per game. So his volume is definitely higher now than what it was the last time they played. And the only real risk to Kyrie covering this line is whether it's ballistic or not, right? But look, that last game, Luca was going off. He was on pace to score 60 points at one point, and Kyrie still finished with 24 points and 7 assists covering this line. Now, I hope Luca doesn't track for another 60-point game and shut everyone out. But, yeah, I don't mind this play. Something I need to research heavily because the risk is of Luka Doncic having a big game is so present. And the way that he's playing as a late leaves me a little bit hesitant, but I'm just sharing with you what I'm leaning in, leaning into right now and what I'm going to research after I finish recording this video. Uh, but the very last play is in the last game. So Los Angeles Clippers versus Sacramento Kings. Um, Malik Monk's out, injured his knee in that last game. Luka Doncic destroyed him, landed on top of his skinny ass. And this game, the Clippers are three and a half favorites. And the only play that I'm taking is a play that I've taken, and that is for Terrence Mann. Terrence Mann in the first quarter. I feel like it's serving me well. Why don't we just go back to it? Now, check this out. In his last 10 games, he's covered his line of two and a half points in seven of those games. In his last six games, he's covered it every single time. Now, Terrence Mann, I don't know if you watch the Clippers. All he does is shoot wide open three-pointers, right? 
I'm almost that all of these are three pointers. Sometimes he hits two threes in the first quarter. Sometimes he hits one. But all we need is one. In head to head matchups, he's hit this in five out of his last seven. Four consecutive games against the Sacramento Kings. Terrence Mann has cashed in the first quarter. In terms of the matchup, the Kings, they do allow the fifth most points to shooting guards on the season. That's not too important because Terrence Mann is going to be left open. If you think about the threats that the Clippers have, James Harden, Paul George, Kawhi Leonard, Zubak getting dirty on the inside. Terrence Mann is the least likely threat that they have on the on the offensive side of thing. So if they blitz James Harden in the pick and roll, if they double Paul George on the drive, if they double Kawhi Leonard in the post, if there's some swing action, Terrence Mann's going to be the guy that's wide open. I can guarantee you that. And all we need is Terrence Mann to make one three-pointer in the first quarter. He plays about nine minutes in the first quarter, so there's a good opportunity there. I'm still going to research it further to see how many attempts he gets up, but I took the bet last time, so I would have done the research. And he's cashed the only bet I made on him since last time. So chances are I'm going to take this bet again, right? Um, unless I find some find a reason not to. But yeah, I'm not minding that one at all. So I can hear it in my voice. We're about the, we're hitting about the 30 minute mark. Struggling here, but I got a lot of um, a lot of positive comments that you guys like this new structure of things. We're not wasting time talking through players that I'm not considering. But what it means for you guys out there is I'm not showing you the players that are available. Meaning. Now you have to do your own research. So um, there are other good players on the books. I just did a quick scan, came up with my leans. I showed you my process in the video a couple of days ago on how I find these plays. I've taken my short list and I'm just going to keep sticking to that until I feel better to do a deep dive. I strongly encourage you to sign up to Outlier, use my free seven-day trial, play around with it, follow the videos along that I do. And I promise you, you'll be able to find your picks. I don't know if you guys noticed when I was showing you how to find these, when I was finding these players before I found them, didn't you notice they were all at the top? And that's how great Outlier is. It puts the most likely plays to hit at the top of the list. Like it's it's a no-brainer. Since I signed up with, and started using Outlier over the other place, my hit rate just started to increase like crazy. So it's the same stats, but the way that Outlier presents it to you, I'm telling you, it can't be beaten. But yeah, free seven-day trial. Link in the video description below. If you're looking for a new sports book, I've got um, a code for BetUS. They got a deposit match um, on first three deposits, 125%. And the reason why I encourage you guys to use as many sports books as you possibly can is to take advantage of promos and get those deposit matches, right? So what I do with bonus bets is I like to throw bonus bets at all my parlays. I don't really like to use my actual money on parlays because it's a losing way to bet. My money tends to go on all these single bets. But the, the stuff like a BAP or if I want to multi like a couple of my single bets together or if I want to put my high value singles and multi those together, bonus bets is the way to go to those. It's a risk-free way of betting. I keep my hard-earned cash for all those singles. But that's a video for another day. I'm going to get into diving into these plays, get my pin comment up. Appreciate you guys for watching. I'll catch you in the next one. Peace. Sub to the channel cause your boy's getting busy Coming to you live from the west side of Sydney We've got the free picks and the juice and the daily It's all free, you don't even have to pay me